this is it. This is the video that you've all been waiting for. You know, I'm going to make my final prediction. I've done 10, 11, 12 videos covering various things for footwork, power, resume, chin, you know, all of this shit I've broken down, X's and O's for Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, and initially I stated I'm shading towards Errol Spence Jr. My prediction has changed. You're going to want to stick around for that. In this video, I give my final prediction and my final whys as to why I'm going the direction I'm going in. This is your boy, JG. This is The Punch Report. Let's go. Like I said before, y'all, welcome back to the channel. This is your boy, JG. In this video, final prediction, Errol Spence Jr. turns, Bud Crawford goes down Saturday, July 29th. We're less than two weeks out, and the time for game playing is over now. Before I get into the video, understand people are going to be hurt by what I have to say. I know my comment section is going to go crazy, but this is why I love the sport of boxing. Shout out to Errol Spence Jr. Shout out to Terrence Bud Crawford. Let's get into it right now. So initially I stated I was leaning towards Errol Spence Jr. And I'm going to change my uh, prediction just a little bit. Now, before I get into that, I want to go over the very brief history of my prediction making skills uh, in the sport of boxing recently. If I go back to, I think it was 2021, Errol Spence Jr., your Dennis Ugas, the video is still up. If you guys can give me another channel that made this exact prediction, just send it to me. Put a link in there. Send it to me. I said my final prediction, Errol Spence Jr., your Dennis Ugas, would be Errol Spence by Dr. Stoppage. I said that, I think, 10 days out. Not knockout, not TKO, by Dr. Stoppage. Possibly TKO. That's pretty damn specific, and what do we get? Your Dennis Ugas looking crazy, blown up eye. Doctor evaluates him in the corner. Referee waves the fight off. I gave you guys a prediction for... Ryan Garcia, Javante Tank Davis. Well, now a fight that if we're going to be really honest, if you knew anything about the sport, it was fairly easy to call for those who actually thought Ryan Garcia had an opportunity to get that done. He has a lot of talents. He's developing the skill right now with Derek James. Shout out to Derek James. But he was in no position to be competitive against a guy as polished as Tank Davis. With that being said, I gave you inside of seven rounds or inside of eight rounds, stop it to the body specifically the video was still up told you how it was going to happen why it was going to happen full breakdowns videos are still up errol spence jr terrence bud crawford my final prediction i shaded towards errol spence jr and i've changed my prediction i'm not shading anything towards errol errol is going to flat walk through terrence bud crawford i know i know i know the counter punching skill and ability the dog in them, and we're going to talk about all those things. I know they exist for Bud Crawford, and quite honestly, Errol dispatching a Bud Crawford in a manner that seems unfair um, is not even a knock on Terrence Bud Crawford. It's just not. Errol Spence is just really much too much, and I'm going to get into some key factors why. The first factor really is not going to be a surprise to anyone. It's the jab, and I know the conversation surrounding it. The ability for Terrence Bud Crawford to counterpunch, follow the jab home. That's going to create complexities for Errol Spence Jr. And some of that may be true. But ultimately, if you've evaluated any fighters that Bud has fought recently who had a quality jab, he struggled with that jab. He struggled to get around that jab and he struggled and he struggled to initiate his own offense. There's been questions about how was it that your Dennis Ugas and Danny Garcia were able to nullify the jab as counter punchers. Well, Danny Garcia did not nullify the jab. It's the metric that cost him the fight. I think he got out jabbed 104 to 14. Um, and the body shot and the power shots, excuse me, were even number. Your Dennis Uga style of high guard fighting was favorable for Arrow to close this distance from a more irresponsible perspective, get to the body and start putting damage on your Dennis Ugas. And that worked out for Errol Spence Jr. It was not a jab heavy fight. Although I think it was the fifth or sixth round, Derek James did tell Arrow, yo, Stop playing. Get back to that jab and stop playing games. Um, I don't think Errol really took the guidance in that moment in time. He was um, getting free shots on Ugas because Ugas loves to give up a little bit to get something. And typically his counter punching acumen is top tier. 
and worked against Ray Robinson, who he stopped. Obviously, he lumped up Pacquiao pretty good. But if you're going against a guy who is a destructive puncher, which breaking bones, breaking orbitals, breaking noses, breaking guys down, like Errol Spence Jr., standing in front of him and just you know, trying to trade shot, that's just not going to be the recipe for success against that type of fighter. The second thing that concerns me when I think about Terrence Bud Crawford's odds in this fight in comparison to Errol Spence Jr. is Errol Spence Jr.'s size, physicality, and durability are something that I didn't spend a lot of time considering. As we draw closer to the fight, you guys have seen images posted on social media, um, the All Access Showtime's done a hell of a job there. Um, I think durability is going to be an issue for Terrence Bud Crawford. One thing I would say for Crawford, though, that I do like is he's in crazy shape, but he didn't do the Mikey Garcia nonsense where Mikey Garcia tried to get all huge and ballooned all up. That was a detriment to Mikey. He was going to lose either way. I think the additional weight does not help him. Recent images of Terrence Bud Crawford, he looks to be exactly where he needs to be. Um, as far as a weight and efficiency perspective, when you evaluate his body, he looks fantastic. So he's not going to suffer the same fate from the perspective of having the inability to flat move or get out of the way. But going back to the durability of Errol Spence Jr., I said that Terrence Bud Crawford's best opportunity to get a victory in this fight was going to be on a one shot. A lot of the responses that I got from that was, well, didn't he just one shot David Avenesian? So... Uh, it was a two-shot combination, and he did knock him out cold. However, are we really going to compare David Avenesian to Errol Spence Jr.? So that's my first question. Yeah, it's a, it's a professional prize fight. It was um, a spectacle at best. It was definitely glorified sparring for Bud Crawford. Quite honestly, if you go back and watch Avenesian Crawford, Crawford's either practicing things he hasn't worked on in quite some time, or he's looking a little bit slowed down. But there is one thing, stick to stick uh, to the end of this video, because I'm going to highlight the thing that could get it done for Crawford, even though I'm saying that it's not likely. But I will give you that tidbit, stick to uh, stick around to the end of the video. David Avenesian fight, tune-up style fight, glorified sparring, gets him out of there. I'm not sure he looks super great in that fight. The other concerning thing when I think about that fight, the most recent fight is David Avenesian, the style in which he fought, he understood that he was not going to outpoint or, you know, put on a virtuoso, a virtuoso performance against Bud Crawford that he needed to knock Bud Crawford out. He went into the high guard, tried to walk Bud down through winging overhand shots. He had some success there, but Bud Crawford is just a next level fighter when you're thinking about him against a David Avenesian. We know that... Errol Spence Jr. is not going to just walk to Bud Crawford with his hands up in the high guard and provide an opportunity to get brutalized or get clipped with something he might not see coming. From an evaluation perspective, if you look at the Avenesian fight and Errol Spence fight, two different styles, a much bigger man, uh, undefeated champion, unified. Um, they're two different beasts. Durability is going to be an issue for Bud Crawford. Um, he is slight in frame. He has worn some damage in previous bouts, and we have to know, we know for certain, even if, let's say Bud Crawford gets this done, when the fight is over, he will be different. Unless he knocks him out inside of a round or two, Bud Crawford will be different regardless of the outcome of this fight. That's just an attribute that Terrence, or excuse me, Errol Spence Jr. has. There's no arguing or getting around that. Fighter after fighter after fighter, if he doesn't get you out quickly, he maims you up and damage you in some kind of way that it makes it difficult for you to continue in the, into your career. A lot of questions get asked about what's Errol gonna do about Terrence Bud Crawford's ability to counter. Um, and he is tremendous at that. And he can find a home for certain shots early in fights that manifest into knockouts later in fights. I don't think that opportunity will present itself as easily against Errol Spence Jr. And while he's trying to find certain shots, I think pressure mounts, volume mounts, um, and it's going to be difficult to deter a guy with knockout power and destructive power like Errol Spence Jr. from continuing to come forward, especially behind the jab, which Bud Crawford has struggled with before in the past. Now, if you made it this far, you're definitely a real one. I want to give you, if you're a Bud Crawford fan, this is the thing, the one thing, the single thing that if he goes to 
It's going to it's going to take this attribute and something that I've never seen before. Bud Crawford has the innate ability to really kind of shift gears like quickly, like in a moment or between rounds, um, whether he's winning the fight like he was he was cooking Amir Khan the whole fight. But when he decided, like, I'm just going to go to this dude's body repeatedly and then get him out of there, he turned up another gear. And I know that's the Amir Khan fight, but it's still a good example. Uh, the Avenesian fight, which is not another great fighter, but it's still a good example of stepping on the gas, going from a place where you're already fighting really, really well, and then going to another place where you're kind of heightening your skills and abilities. You're, you're honing them and you're becoming more sharp so you can deliver the, the, the shots necessary to ensure victory. Sean Porter is a good example of that as well. He's, that was a tough fight the entire fight, um, but he started putting a little bit more on the shots um, and catching and countering Sean Porter, who's closing recklessly and with his head down. He deserved to get stopped the way that he did, but he understood the magnitude of the moment, especially if Bo Max can tell him, hey, you're down on these cars. What's up with you? All right, cool. I'm going to just walk to Sean Porter and figure it out. And then he puts that passive pressure, as I like to call, or um, shout out to my man Banks Law, that mental pressure on you. He's just fainting in front of Sean Porter, showing hand faints, feet faints. And then Sean Porter takes the bait, puts his head down and just gets socked up. He just runs his face into a punch. But that's all a part of the, you know, of what makes Bud Crawford great. His ability to go to that next level. It will require that and him not being down too bad. And something that I have not seen before. He has to show me something different. If I think about Jeff Horn, Kaviaskis, Jose Benavidez, Avenesian, Sean Porter, Amir Khan. If I think about those guys that Terrence Bud Crawford has fought, he has not shown me anything unique from one fight to the next. Errol Spence boxed up Mikey Garcia until he knew he couldn't take it. Then he brutalized him, stopped Ocampo to the body um, in, a, in a single round, went toe to toe with Sean Porter, spinning and, and hooking, um, and then went toe to toe with your Dennis Ugas, a well known counterpuncher with good size and broke him down and got him out of there and disfigured him. Um, those are constants. But my pick for this bout, Errol Spence Jr. And how I see it ending is possibly with Terrence Bud Crawford taking a knee, excuse me, from damage. Um, and that's not because he's a punk or he can't take it, but there's only so much you can take. I think about Miguel Cotto Margarito when he had the dirty raps and he cheated. Margarito, I mean, Cotto could still fight. He was still in there, but the damage was too much. He takes that knee. He shakes his head. It's a wrap. I don't think the corner of Bud Crawford would ever get on the apron and stop the fight. So I'm not going that direction. So I think it's accumulation of damage. Um, you're getting pounded on and you got to take that knee to preserve yourself. The fight gets waves off. The first undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Errol Spence Jr., big fish man down strap season. If Bud Crawford gets this done, he will have shown me something that I have not seen him display before. And questions about who he is as a true champion, them shits go away, but I cannot see it. This is your boy, JG. This is The Punch Report. We out.